What up, YouTube? This is Beasley TV coming to you with another video. And when it comes to the word bust, a few things come to mind. Usually to people, what, what place they were drafted at, what team, and did they perform? Or what teams, or what expectations they had, right? Well, many people don't actually think that it's not, um, half of the time, it's not the player's fault. And the, the reason I say that is, case in point, case in point, well, let's talk about Adam Morrison, right? Now, Adam Morrison went to the Bobcats. Now, look at the team the, ba the Bobcats had when they got him. When, when the Bobcats got Adam Morrison, they already had Rukiria Emeko Okafor from like a couple years prior. They had point guard of the future, Raymond Felton. They had Gerald Wallace, who was, who was their best player, the leading scorer, lockdown defender, and in the future was going to be an all-star. So, and they drafted Sean May that, a year before, that, before Adam Morrison got there. So all those players are supposed to be their future. Then they draft Adam Morrison. Now, Adam Morrison is a pure scorer, is a pure shooter in college. Why would they put him on a team where he does not have the green light? That's an organization fault. And because he didn't have his confidence right after that, that messed his career up. He, is a, he was a proven scorer. He was a proven shooter in college. You have to give him the green light to shoot. Why would you draft him? Unless you want him to become an elite scorer, elite shooter. So give him the ball. They didn't do that. And what and once his confidence was down, then he realized the NBA defenders were better. So he couldn't get a shot over them as as much. But I'm pretty sure and as a rookie he averaged 12 points a game on that horrible team. But if they would have had the offense designed around him more, I'm not saying he would have been an NBA All-Star, but he wouldn't have been, I don't think he would have been in the league like that. And I know he can't defend, a lot of players can't defend. And they have long careers in the NBA, successful careers. One of my favorite players, Melo. He's, he was, he's athletic, but for some reason he can't travel laterally, and he's not as good as a defender. Long NBA career, because why? Because he can put the bucket in the hole. And that could have that could have been, you know, Morris is way less athletic than Carmelo. But he could have JJ Reddick is in the league, can't guard nobody. Boba can't guard nobody. Joe Harris ain't guard nobody. But they they were shooters and they stayed in, and they stayed in the league. They're veterans. So that could have been something for Adam Morris. Also, another player. Let's talk about. Now, Kwame Brown, organization matters. He got drafted to the organization with Michael Jordan in it. That didn't work, right? Michael Jordan messed up his confidence as a young player. Guess where he gets traded to next? Michael Jordan's clone. Michael Jordan Jr., Michael Jordan 2.0, whatever you want to call it. Kobe Bryant. The same thing, the same kind of... Negative reinforcement, the same type of feedback. See how that messes up, messes up Kwame Brown's career. Even though he, he was able to stay in the league for about 12 years and have a solid career, averaging like seven points and seven rebounds a game. But still, come on, that career could have been much better. Let's talk about some other players that it may have been the organization why their career didn't go as well. So, another reason that a player was a bust at the beginning of his career, because they didn't put him on the right, on the, with the right uh, players, and he wasn't, and he just wasn't right for that fit. Tyson Chandler. So, in his early career, he was drafted by the Bulls. The same night they drafted Tyson Chandler, they went and got Eddie Curry. Why would they do that? 
neither of them can space the floor. Both of them do the same thing. Well, not same thing. Eddie Corey it was a back to back to the basket scorer, and Tyson Chandler was a defensive rebounder, offensive rebounder, and shot blocker. But they based, they were on the same part of the court. They occupied the same part of the court. They got in each other's way. The team was bad, and they played okay. But the team was bad. That didn't work out. What happened? Eddie Curry went to New York. Averaged 20 points a game, 7 rebounds. What happened when Tyson Chandler left the Bulls? He went to play with um, Chris Paul. And his career started going up. Went to play with Chris Paul. Then he you know, eventually got to the Mad- Mavericks. Played pretty well. Became a champion. Then became defensive player of the year. Became an all-star, all-NBA player. Because where you at matters. Your GM matters. Case in point, Andrew Wiggins. Now, Andrew Wiggins would have been better if he went to a team like Miami because the structure they have if he went to the Lakers, because the structure their organization has, if he went to the Celtics, if he would have been to one of the maybe the Chicago Bulls, these, these franchises that have strong winning cultures that, and they don't take nothing from young guys they don't they, they don't take nothing from veterans either just like Pat Riley had held LeBron accountable Pat Riley would have held this young guy accountable and so on for the other ones it's not just the player they all have talent you know how they all I know they all have talent because they all they all killed the, the, the last level which means they had the talent to at least get there. They were NBA players, at least NBA players. They were at least good enough to be NBA players. They were so good that they got drafted top five. So you're telling me the talent left as soon as they got to the league? No. It's, sometimes it's about fit. Sometimes it's about organization. Sometimes it's about coaching staff. And sometimes it's about the players' drive. But a lot more times than not, the roster isn't the right fit for that young player. If you drafted a, number, a top five pick, you should. If you draft a top five pick and you are not already a, a contender, you are not like the Golden State Warriors were well this year with James Wiseman. You should be clearing out the offense and and uh, maybe tailoring tailor, the defense. Around the young guy too, if they have, if they're not good at defense, or if they're very good at defense, making sure that they're covering up other people. But organizations need to be taking that fall. Why the fuck did they? Why the fuck did the New Orleans Pelicans go out and trade for Lonzo, and then a year later go get Eric Bledsoe? Now Lonzo, we average about 14 points a game this year, about 14, 4, and 4. But he's not playing point. He's playing shooting guard, basically. The ball's not in his hand. I'm looking at his field goal attempts. Most of his field goal attempts are three-point shots. Catch and shoot three-point shots. That's not Lonzo's game. He needs to facilitate. He needs to get in that lane. That's where he, he can be better. NBA organizations need to be held accountable when it comes to players becoming draft busts. And that's all I gotta say about it. This has been Busy TV and we out.